Thank you. you are worthy to be praised, oh God. Oh God, we just thank you for this day, Lord. Father God, we just thank you for awakening us up this morning. Lord, we just thank you for starting us on our way this morning, oh God. Father God, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your faith, oh God. I pray that you have made upon us, oh God. You have called us all by name this morning, oh God. So we live in this place right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for you are the whole of Jehovah.
she put the baskets together for all of the, our couples and she personalized them their names and just different uh, personal things in each basket to make it um, just personable to the couple. And, um, and I know that was by the direction of the Lord and um, the decorations. Um, and please forgive me, Sister Bob. We were so excited about everything. We didn't get to take pictures. The table with the, with the drop on it looked amazingly nice. Thank you so much. The baskets, everything. So, can we can y'all help me just celebrate this so Thank you so much. And every couple was blessed. And um, we got to witness the presence and the power of God in our time together. Because how many know that God loves and God promotes and God defends covenant? Amen. The reason he does it is because in the earth, a man and wife is the physical image of Christ and the church. And God is the greatest protector over covenant. And so we're grateful to the Lord. And we're excited because there's so much that God is doing in this season. Um, I was reflecting back on all, um, not quite all, but just what came to my mind, just some of the things that the Lord has been doing and the Lord has been saying in this ministry. And I remember when we initially said yes to the Lord to launch this ministry. And it was a complete walk of faith because all we had was the prophetic word of the Lord. We didn't see any faces. We didn't see any anything um, in, tangibly. But by faith, we just saw people. We didn't see faces. And I'll never forget how we had to walk by faith um, in everything that we did um, in sowing and pushing and planning and um, tilling and all the things that we had to do. And um, I was just kind of looking at everything and you know always and, and anybody that you, if you start a business you 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 get to understand where I'm going and you're starting a family anytime you're starting anything new your desire is always for success but there's always just you know in the back of your mind you know that there are potential for other things and um, as I begin to just think about the faithfulness of God my heart became so full. Yes. I've been crying all weekend. When I thought about the faithfulness of God, that if we step out of faith and believe God, even though we don't see and we can't even fathom how everything's going to come together, but if we step out of faith and believe God, God, it's like He would tell me, I got you. I'm not gonna leave you. And I'm so grateful to the Lord. I'm just I'm just at awe of God, I'm just looking at everything, how the season, things are just blossoming, things are opening up. Um, I see another another dimension of virus life. It's almost like things are coming to life. Amen. Hallelujah. Dreams, visions, desires are being restored and rekindled. Things are coming back to life. It's an amazing season for us prophetically. And um, I would um, really just charge anybody in this season, do not, do not let the spirit of fear stagnate you. Do not let the spirit of fear suffocate you. Do not let the spirit of fear hold you hostage. Even if you gotta take, if you gotta close your eyes to take the leap, close your eyes and leap the leap of faith into the things of God, and trust the details to Him. Hallelujah, glory to God. Everything we do is by faith. So I want to read this this text. Before I move, before I move. 
It's in John chapter 12. By the way, thank you for coming. You're amazing. You're amazing, Lord God. The pastor, we ride down the road. The pastor shows me this poster he put up. The scripture. And I'm like, what? And I saw the post and I was just amazed. God, I don't even hate it. Let it. Like, don't take me back there. Don't no, take me back there. I'm trying to move forward. He left. Next week. Wow. Next week. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Well. Foundation. Okay. But thank you. Thank you for putting that post out. Thank you for your heart. And you know. It's not anything that's coerced. It's from the heart. And I want to say, I know we never said it before, but I want to say to you, and the cause came out of this mouth, but from us, thank you. For, your heart, for everything you did. I want you to know that it's not gone unnoticed. And I want you to know that we appreciate it more than you ever know. Amen. And I want you to know that you are the biggest blessing to us. Even though you're sitting in the corner, you are still out in front.
freedom upon your tongue. You're loose and free to speak and declare and praise your soul.
declaring this is a new day that I'm going to do things. Hallelujah. See and know, said the Spirit of the Lord, that there shall be a release, that there is even now a release of my glory. A glory that has never been seen before, a glory that I deserve for the time such as this. But yea, even as I've declared to you and spoken unto you in times past, and I'm going to do a new thing. And you shall see my power and my hand in signs and wonders and miracles. Yea, said the Spirit of God, I'm not a man that I shall not, nor the Son of Man that I shall be made. As I have declared to you, so shall it be. As I have given my promise, my promise to you, so shall it be, said the Lord. But you shall see tangibly with your eyes signs, wonders, miracles, deliverances, breakthroughs, such as you have never seen. You will begin to witness them in your body. You will begin to witness them in your flesh. You will begin to witness them in your families. You will begin to witness them even as you are out and about, said the Spirit of the Lord. But this new thing that I do, said God, shall not be hid in a corner. But yea, said God, it shall spill over out of this place. And it shall flow, it shall flow in the streets. Like water running down the street. This new move. Even as I declared it in my last days, I'm going to pour out, I'm going to pour out. The A said, God, now is the time of the pouring out. And I'm pouring out my spirit in new measure, in new measure, in new measure, in new measure. The A now said, the Lord, look past what you are able to do. And even as I said in my word, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit. Do not fear, said God, but step into my strength. In my strength, your weakness is, is made complete in my strength. This is the season now. The door is open, said God. Step into my strength and let my strength cover your weakness. No, no, no beyond a shadow of a doubt that all things are possible for me to you if you believe, said the Spirit of the Lord. David now said, God, those things that I've spoken to you, for I'm doing a new thing in families. I'm doing a new thing in families. I'm doing a new thing in your seed. Because even as I promised in my word that the seed of the righteous shall be saved, I'm causing a revival in seeds. That even as it is in natural Israel, that there was a time of dispersion and separation and scattering. Now said God, this is the season of the gathering. Now I'm calling, I'm gathering, I'm pulling and bringing back together that which has been scattered. Prophesy. Even in your life, those things that have been scattered, now is the season to say, God, I am causing those things to come back. I'm calling them back. So that you will no longer be divided, that you will no longer be lacking, but you will be whole and entire, not lacking anything. But yet, this season, said the Spirit of God, you shall walk in a new dimension and a new, greater level of wholeness, 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 and fulfillment. This is a season for wholeness and fulfillment, said the Lord. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And as I have spoken it, so shall it be. Hallelujah. 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 Can we just bless the name of the Lord right now?
read this passage of scripture. Say pray to
Y'all, y'all excuse me, Facebook. I just uh, had a moment. I think I'm going to have that. Let me tell you something. Don't you know that that's how God feels about us? Yes. And when we come to the presence of God, there's a twinkle in his eye when we show up. As the Bible says, we're the apple of his eye. Yeah. Yes. That's why he's jealous for his time. Like when we, we commit to a time and, and we get absent from our time, he's like, wait a minute. I was looking forward to this time together with you. Even if you're not saying I'm you're just in my presence, I'm looking at you. Just for my eyes to behold you, this fulfillment, this joy. <sighs> okay, okay. I gotta come out. Hallelujah, God. My God. That's a love that will absolutely blow your mind. Because your mind cannot apprehend that kind of love. I know everything about you. And it does not deter my love for you. I can still look at you as if there's nothing. I know some of us are waiting to get to that place. Because we've been starved by human examples. But I can tell you today that you, if you will ever step over the faults of human examples and step into the perfect example of the love of a father, and a husband. Okay. You get ready to receive the word of the Lord. And I'm honored today. One of our, another one of our leaders are, is going to present the word of the Lord to us. Minister Cheney Fabius. Yeah. 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 Minister Cheney Fabius. Can we celebrate the Lord as she comes to stay? Hallelujah. It's baby as the possible. Oh my goodness. My God.
Minister to and he's not here today. Um, to watch him prepare to present at the marriage retreat and then to witness him present at the marriage retreat and then to talk about it afterwards. He really has a heart for couples. He has a heart for people. Yes. And, you know, we're working in the same house, so I'm hearing him talking to his clients and things like that, but it's different when you're ministering to the couples. And God, we yeah. appreciate you all because this was your first retreat. And rather than being, rather than doubting having a guest speaker come and, and, and creating the, the agenda and the program for the event and allowing him to speak, you don't take it lightly at all. And I just, I was, I was sitting there and I was reflecting, and I, I do a lot of reflecting, and I was reflecting and I was just thankful because we weren't even, I wasn't even going to go. I wasn't going to go. But Val said last week, just bring the kids, we'll help. And I just think about my village. Yes. Amen. To come down here with one lady and have another baby. And, and, you know, throughout this pandemic and being in the house and our families not being able to come down to get a text message weekly from Pastor, like, I haven't heard from you this week. How's it going? And to come and, and know that, you know, Val's chasing Joe around at the retreat. And Montrese is picking him up, making sure, and the savages got us, and all, it's just my village. I'm so appreciative, and I thank, thank God, God for it. God. I thank God for it. I thank God for it. I thank God for Tasha, I thank God for Kylin, I thank God for Kina, I thank God. Oh my God. I thank God. Oh my God. He's so oh, faithful. Lord. For every, for every trick the enemy tries to play on my mind, the Lord reminds me yes. that this is what we're supposed to be yes. yes. He reminds me. He reminds you. He confirms it. For every trick he tries to play, Some of y'all might say, we've well, been down here for a few years, it don't matter. We came down here with no family. That's right. In faith, and we had a, a baby. She was one. And so I'm thankful. Thank you. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Okay. Okay, God, thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord. For speaking through me. Thank you, Lord, for using me as a vessel. May there be open ears and open hearts to receive your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, the apostle had uh, been all up and through my word, but um, so good. It is. <laughs> it's confirmation. It's confirmation. It really is confirmation. Um, so I'm going to read, you all can be seated. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, but really concerning that God doing a new thing, number one, My God. but then the Lord is also sharing that I'm doing a new thing, but new is required of you too. Yeah, that's good. And what often happens when we encounter new is that we have to deal with fear. Yes, and so, as Apostle was talking, I, Steve goes to me this morning, you good, you ready? And I, uh, I said, I'm as ready as I'm gonna get. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the house. Joe has, <laughs> Joe has a cold, so Steve is, is at home with him this morning, but, but it was confirmation sitting there and hearing, so okay, Lord, I heard you right. So I'm going to read first, first Isaiah 43 and 19, which we have talked about this morning and, and in the past few weeks. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? 
I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And then I'm going to jump over to 1 Peter chapter 1. Verses 6 through 7, and then we're going to skip down this 13 through 16. I'm going to read these both in the New King, King James Version as well as the message. So 1 Peter, verse, or chapter 1, verse 6 through 7, rather. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more than precious, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you, um, who having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you will you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith the salvation of your souls. And I'm going to read it in the message as well. I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have had to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. Genuine faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith, not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. You never saw him, yet you love him. You still don't see him, yet you trust him with laughter and singing. Because you kept on believing, you'll get what you're looking for, forward to total salvation. And then I'm going to go down to 13 through 16 in the New King James Version. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is, writ because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. And the message version says, so roll up your sleeves. Get your head in the game. Amen. Be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil. Doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better then. You do now. As obedient children, let, our, uh, let yourselves excuse me, be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I'm holy, you be holy. And then the last set of scriptures I'm going to read is Romans 8, 31 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, yes. who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sleep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yet in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, 
nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. So we've been talking so much about new and declaring new and, and knowing and understanding, having awareness that God is truly doing a new thing during this time. Even, you know, as Steve was praying last week, last week uh, declaring that we are living in a new day. So when you look up new, um, and I'm going to piece together the definition, but new or is the Soros size, that's not a word. New, <laughs> that's not a word. Um, advanced, original, unfamiliar, unique, uncontaminated, unknown, and distinct. So God is reinforcing today that he's doing a new thing. He's reminding you that he's doing a new thing. Yeah. And new is, I was thinking about when something is, something new is required. When do you introduce new? New is often introduced when, number one, the old way is not working, yes. right? Yes. Or when a better way exists. Yes. So it doesn't necessarily follow, you know, the say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if there's a better way, you know, Apple upgrades their iPhone every nine months or whatever. <laughs> They might tweak a little bit of something here and there, but if there's a better way to make the machine operate, it's time for new. And so we're in a time when God is making things visibly new. We're in unprecedented times. So even though we see, we, we, we're in this time when there's, there's new and celebration, we also have to remember that this is going alongside the devastation that's taking place in the past year. Mm -hmm. And I know we've pressed forward and we, we, um, we continue to celebrate God. And if we're honest, we still have experienced many challenges this year. We've lost a lot of people. It's not normal. It's not normal in our lifetime to see whole families wiped out by disease. It's not normal. So all of what God is doing is happening alongside what we've experienced this year. Collectively, individually, collectively, nationally, and globally. But God is doing something new in the midst of all of that. Yes. But as the bulk of what I read um, in First Peter, and, um, and First Peter reminds us, that even as we go through new, we're in this new day, we're going to experience challenges. But it calls us to stay focused. And Romans reminds us that in all things, we are conquerors. So new doesn't mean easy, right? It doesn't mean easy. It doesn't mean things will come easy. But it's a better way. It's better than what we were doing before. So you will probably see challenges that are coming along in the coming days as we move, as we continue to move in this new season. And one of the other things the Lord gave me when I was reading off the, the um, synonyms of new uh, and the definitions, new can also mean unusual, peculiar, and strange. Yes. So don't be surprised if you start doing what the Lord told you to do and people are looking at you like, you wasn't doing that last year, or that's not what you've been doing. Yes. <laughs> You're weird. It's new. It's new. It, it means different. It may not always be accepted, expected, or popular, but you have to be uh, confident. And as we've been growing and maturing, as the word says, you're not children anymore. We have to understand that that's par for the course. Sometimes somebody will look at you like you're crazy. Everybody's not going to jump on your, your, your bandwagon. That's right. And we can't rely on that that's right. as believers. They didn't hear from God, you did. All right. Amen? That's right. New. But the Lord gave me two action items 
that we as believers need to think about as we're entering and living in this new time. Because what we don't want to happen is that you miss the wave, yeah. right? Good. That you're, you're back in the same cycles yeah. that you have, um, or you're repeating patterns or you're repeating cycles yeah. because the, the time has passed for you to, to you get into the wave. Yes. And we also uh, don't want to make changes that are superficial. Yeah. Because there are things that we kind of bl glaze over when there are actually deeper issues rooted in our heart. And if we're honest with God, we could probably be delivered from those. But we want to kind of cover it up with this, like, you know, me and my spouse are arguing. Okay, well, what are y'all arguing about? What is the issue that you're offended by? Why are you offended by that? Well, we want to talk about the surface stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We can't do that this season. The Lord is calling us to be closer to him and authentic yeah. with That's him. Good. Honest with him. He already knows. That's the thing. Yeah. You're not covering that thing up. He already yeah. knows, but you have to willingly yeah. uh -huh. open your heart to him. That's right. Right? Yeah. So that you can overcome. Yeah. And so the two action items, that's just what the Lord gave me in terms of terminology, but action items is that we have to overcome some things and we have to abandon or or walk away from some things. And there is a difference. And this is all part of rolling up our sleeves, as the word said, girding up our loins, keeping our head in the game. The difference between overcoming and abandoning, when you overcome something, you have succeeded in dealing with a challenge. You have defeated it. You have conquered it. You've prevailed over it. Abandoning or turning away means just that. You desert something. You give up a relationship or something completely. And what the Lord shared with me is that there are many things that we try to abandon, but that we should be working on overcoming. So you can't abandon fear. You have to overcome fear. You can't just say, I'm not going to think like that no more and walk in the other direction. That's not the way it works. You have to do some inner work to overcome fear. So when we say that we have to abandon something, many of these things are things that we've idolized. Be it a job, a relationship, our schedule. I'm not telling you to quit your job, praise the Lord. <laughs> But we have idolized our job. And so we have to be able to walk away from that mentality. There may be relationships and people, but the uh, popular word today is toxic. But there may be some toxic relationships that you already knew were toxic, but that you really cannot bring with you into where God is taking you. People who are negative all the time. People who are critical of you all the time. Not, not supporting criticism, because that's one thing, but people who are constantly um, negative towards you. People who are you not equally yoked to. You know who they are. Yeah, that's good. And there have been signs that those relationships should have been removed from your life mm -hmm. for a long time. But it is more important than ever to recognize it now and do something about it. If the pandemic hasn't shown you anything, is that tomorrow is not promised. Amen. It's not promised, it's not guaranteed. And so I would rather be in the will of the Lord than be fussing back and forth with somebody that I know I don't have no business dealing with. That's good. It doesn't have to be dramatic. You don't have to cut somebody out or tell somebody off but there are ties that, that should be broken. There are places in your life when you're dealing with people that you just have to part ways. Love you. With the love of the Lord. 
<laughs> but you can't come with me. You can't come with me. Mm -mm. I was looking and um, uh, just go reflecting back on Abram and Lot concerning this. And it says that their herders were fighting and the land could not support them. And it wasn't until after they separated that the Lord said to Abram, look to the east, the west, the north, and the south. I'll give you in your generations all of this. It wasn't until after they separated. And so even what you see now is not it. So that necessary separation, the Lord has something way bigger. But he's waiting on you to say, okay, uh, negative Nancy or whoever, we got to cut this off right here. Yeah. That's right. God might have something more for them that you're holding up for them. It's not always the other person. That's right. Yeah. A lot of it is mutual. Amen? Amen. We also have to abandon uh, some of the bad habits we have. You want a promotion, but you spend too much money. What you going to do with the money if I give you more money? You're going to waste it. Overspending. You're not taking care of your temple. I, I can't do nothing with that. You want all this new, but you're going to squander it away because you have poor habits. Yeah. Yeah. And then our schedules. And the Lord convicts me on this. We are often more dedicated to our calendar and our pattern, our checklist, our to-do list, than we are to spending time with the Lord. We don't have time. It's, it's not about squeezing God in. Amen. Oh my God. You don't need to even be a line item on your on your schedule, right? That's right. But if you are in constant communion with Him and speaking with Him, God does. He's He's too big to have just a spot on your calendar. Yeah. Say that. Say nothing. Get up. I'm going to pray. And I'm not criticizing anybody that, that prays in the morning at a certain time. But if you're walking with the Lord, feel free to speak with him throughout the day. I only got 15 minutes, Jesus. What are we talking about? That's not the kind of relationship that we can have with him in this time. We can't. And so... The first question concerning abandoning and that you think of personally and, and with you and, and between you and the Lord is what are you going to have to abandon to walk into new? The second thing and what I'm going to spend a good amount of time on is overcoming. What are you going to have to overcome to walk into new? So we know that could be patterns, could be a mindset, could be a generational curse. But the Lord shared with me that a lot of what we have to overcome is rooted in fear. Yeah. It's rooted in fear. Yeah. And the trick of the enemy is that he'll convince you that this is just the way you are. Right? That's good. I'm lazy. You know, it is what it is. I wait to do things. You know, I procrastinate. That just That's just who I am. No, you're not lazy. You're afraid. Difference. There is a difference. Yes. And so fear man itself manifests itself, and I'm going to go through these um, because I think it's important that, because I'm sure that many of us can, can identify with having experienced some of these things, and you wouldn't even think they, they were rooted in fear. Yeah. But God's people need to be educated so that you can call it out right. for what it is. Yes. So fear manifests itself first as procrastination. You delay or postpone starting or doing something. And it's not just because you're disorganized. It's not because, you know, you got a lot going on. It's because you're afraid to start. You're afraid to start. You're afraid to begin. You're afraid that you'll fail. Procrastination. Fear manifests itself as perfectionism. That's me. 
It's the refusal to accept any standard short of perfection. And so what you do is that you have this need to appear or to be perfect. Or even believe that it's possible to achieve perfection. But it's counterproductive because you waste valuable time mulling over in your head, how can I make this perfect? When the Lord says, I don't need perfect from you. I don't need perfect from you. We're afraid to make mistakes as a result of it. We're afraid of failure, afraid of disappointing people, afraid of disappointing God when he never said you had to be perfect in the first place. Perfectionism, it's fear. The third one is imposter syndrome. How many people have heard of imposter syndrome? Imposter syndrome is doubting your skills, talents, or accomplishments and having a persistent internalized fear as being exposed as a fraud. My God. Despite external evidence of their competence, those experiencing this phenomenon remain convinced that they're frauds and do not accept the reality of their worth. I saw this post um, online yesterday, uh, which was so interesting to me because it says, recently I told a friend how it confuses me. It was calling out imposter syndrome. And it was saying, recently I told a friend how it confuses me when people think more highly of me than I do myself. And the friend responded, they see you for who you really are instead of the lie you told to yourself about. Instead of the lie you've told yourself about. Amen. So imposter syndrome is crazy because it may it creates an image in your head of this person who is unworthy, yeah. ill-equipped, yeah. Come on, that's good words. That's good. with low self-esteem, Come on. not worth anything that you have uh, earned or received or been blessed with, yeah. and it's a lie. It's all rooted in fear. It's all rooted in fear. And the trick of the enemy is that it will keep you from moving to the next level. When God is saying we're more than conquerors, how he's created us, how in his image, and we're going, I don't know you did. I don't see that image. Imposter syndrome. It's good. Imposter syndrome, rooted in fear. It's in my profession, imposter syndrome is probably one of the most the the issues that I hear about the most. And we are doctors. We didn't have all the school you can have in the world. <laughs> imposter syndrome. You don't think you deserve something good. because you don't have the credentials. Or the experience. Yes, you do. The Lord gave you the credentials, and the Lord gave you the experience. Absolutely. Imposter syndrome goes beyond just doubting yourself when you don't have the experience or the right credentials. It tricks you into believing that you are that you are still less and incompetent when you have a track record that would demonstrate otherwise. You and the Lord have a track record that demonstrates victory after victory after victory and overcoming after overcoming. But you can't see that. It's rooted in fear. The next one, anxiety. Thank you, Lord. Anxiety is a response to an imprecise or unknown threat, such as the uneasiness that you may feel when you walk down a dark street alone. But you're feeling that constantly. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? You know, you get that feeling when the hairs go up on the back of your neck if you're in an uncomfortable situation, feeling that constantly. But it's all related to a perception 
It's not an actual threat. Anxiety is related to the possibility of something bad happening. Rather than an immediate threat, there's a difference. Fear. Depression. Difficulty finding joy. Afraid of failure so you won't try, but now you can't find the joy in what you're doing. Fear. Blocking full participation in life. I mentioned laziness. You're not lazy, you're scared. People think you're lazy, but you're not lazy, you're scared. You're not lazy, you're scared. And until you understand that, same thing, over and over. Because laziness is based in confusion, saying I don't know what to do, Self-doubt, being afraid of looking stupid, saying, you know what, I'm too tired to do it, I don't care to do it, I'm too old to get started, it's too late for me. Settling in your identity then that you're just a lazy person, it's not laziness, it's fear. And so until you're able to recognize that, because people will continue to label you what they see, mm -hmm. but you have to be the one. You have to take responsibility for yourself. You have to be the one to say, no, that's not me, but I am afraid of some things. What is that? What are those things? The next one is insecurity. Fear that persons perceiving us will not like us based on attributes that we lack confidence in, self-questioning, self-doubt. And fear has physical manifestations. So it's not just your mind that's impacted. Chest pains, chills, dry mouth, nausea, rapid heartbeat, heart attack. You're driving yourself, you're making yourself literally sick and can't understand that the root of it all is fear. fear of new. We've celebrated. God's doing something new. It's like, oh, I got to do new stuff too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I was going to have to do that. <laughs> what you going to do? Not the same thing. So we could be fear fearful of failure. But you could also be fearful of success. Because what happens when you're good at something? People start pulling on you. To whom much is given, much is required. You've shown yourself to be faithful. You've shown yourself to be honest. The person that can do what they said they were going to do. And you're afraid that there will be more work. There will be more stuff to do. The Lord will equip you, equip you for that. Yes, That's not an excuse. The Lord will equip you. Yes, he will. This word is for me. <laughs> <laughs> this word is for me. He'll equip you yes, he with everything you need. Yes, he will. Yeah. You could be fearful of the task. And this rises when you just, you don't have an understanding of what you have to do or what the Lord is calling you to do. Mm -hmm. But that goes back to understanding that he's equipped us. Not just going to plop new in our lap. He, we've been going through training, right? Yeah. This entire, this year and, the, you know, throughout your life, every experience is woven together to prepare you for what God gives you. You're more than equipped. And he gives you what you need when you need it. Mm -hmm. But you have, to be you have to be close to him. Like I say, you can't be a line item on your calendar. Because then you show up and you're like, oh Lord, help me. I tried to help you. <laughs> tried. <laughs> you was busy. <laughs> <laughs> you was too busy. And one thing that 
Um, so we talked about all these different types of fear, but the Lord is calling us to overcome. Yeah. And as Apostle was saying earlier, the only way to do that is to do it. When people are dealing with phobias, if someone's afraid to go outside, be around people, you cannot overcome that fear by staying in the house. Right? Right. You can't overcome it by staying in the house. You can only overcome it by doing the thing that you're afraid of. Yeah, so maybe you don't show up at the NMT stadium or whatever, but you need to go outside and be around folks. Maybe you take a walk, but you have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do it. It's necessary. And I can't tell you what you're going to have to overcome or what you're going to have to abandon or turn away from. It's personal to you. It is. It's personal to you. It requires you to be transparent with God. As I mentioned, there's no point in telling him only half truths. You know, parents, when you ask your kids something and you already know they did it, <laughs> it was one time Zena snuck into my diaper bag and got some chips. And I hear it's quiet, so I'm going. I was still pregnant with Joe. I said, Where is Zena? So I go downstairs and I hear the bag ruffling in the bathroom. <laughs> and so I go in there and I said, Zena, you eating chips? And she's holding the bag, chips all over her mouth. No. <laughs> I said, I think I see some chips. <laughs> no. The evidence is already there. The Lord sees it. You won't lie about it. Or not present the full story to him. He already knows the story. He already knows. He already knows. So for every aggravation we go through or we deal with, every piece of, um, of frustration, we have to understand that the Lord is doing something new. And this is part of new. There's still a process that we have to go through as individuals. New doesn't mean you stop growing. It doesn't mean you've arrived. It doesn't mean you, you've reached the end of your development in the Lord. It's actually an opening for more yeah. and greater. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. God is doing a new thing, but new is required from you. What are you going to have to overcome to walk in new? And what are you going to have to abandon to walk in new? If you take anything from, the, from, this, from this message, take those three questions. Take those three questions. God, I thank you. For this time, I pray that someone heard your word, Lord. That even as we called out fear and how it manifests itself, that someone received revelation concerning their own journey, their own process, their own story. That we know that we are more than overcomers, more than conquerors of you, Lord. God, I thank you for the fertile hearts this morning, this afternoon. I thank you, oh God, for the open ears, the willingness, oh God. The ears that hear you calling. The ears that hear you calling, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. For the people of God who have been afraid, who have allowed others in society to label them, that you can speak to their heart this morning to get to the root of the matter. You're not lazy. Thank you, Lord. It's not just the way you are. Thank you, Lord. 
that people would be transparent with you this morning, oh God, and honest, that they would even desire for you to show them that what they're dealing with is fear, so that they can truly address and overcome it. To truly end generational curses, to truly stop cycles, to truly, oh God, stop patterns of destruction, to truly stop patterns of destruction, that they might draw near to you, oh God, and you to them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For those that hurt themselves in this message, oh God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the revelation. And we thank you, oh God, for the healing and transformation that will take place. In Jesus' name.
me requires more. We know more, we do more. We know better, we do, we do better. better. Amen. Amen. One more time, can we just give God praise for the word? And uh, we get ready to start.